Hi and welcome to my studio. So this full length tutorial I'm going to show you how to create bold, vibrant, strong colours with watercolour. So to begin with I've done a simple line drawing and this is how I trace mine down just by printing it out and just doing an outline like this. A very clean outline is all we need. Now the secret of creating darker colours with watercolour is all about the paper and I'll talk to you about that in a moment but let's just talk materials really quickly. The paints I'm using are from Schmincke from this limited edition set but I'm just using a couple of colours from here. I've swatched out the colours on my card like this and I've actually done a separate video on how I match my colours to my photograph and I'll put it on the top of your screen so that you can watch that if you want to. We're just using a few colours today, transparent light red and ruby red from this kit and also perillion violet and neutral tint which are by Windsor and Newton but I always say just use the colours that you have that are nearest to the ones I'm using and the brushes are from Rosemary & Co primarily. These are spotter brushes that have a shorter bristle and a few others that I have within my kit. This is a little mop brush that I had from a gallo and also another one that I'll be using later but we'll talk about all the materials later on as we go through and I will link everything in the description box underneath this video. This is an old mixing brush that I have, it's just a really old spotter that's got a damp, it's got a really blunt bristle and we're mixing a really watery mix of neutral tint to begin with and I'm applying this wet in wet which means I'll be applying the water only where I want to drop this really watery mix of paint. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, we have a free line drawing and reference photograph to accompany this tutorial. Indeed, all of our tutorials here on YouTube, and you can have access to those simply by joining our Facebook group, and I will link it in the description box underneath this video. Do consider joining us there. We are a really amazing community. You can share all your finished paintings on there as well and get some feedback. Right, back to the job in hand. You can see I'm carefully applying this with my mop brush. You can use any brush at all to do this um, where you want the paint to go. You'll notice from the reference photograph here that it has a sort of gentle grey tone and I found that neutral tint was kind of ideal for this in this instance. I wanted to use a really limited number of paints for this tutorial to show that you can you don't need to have a lot of paints to join in. So you can see I'm just dropping the paint onto the paper like this with the brush and right up to that outside edge as well keeping inside the pencil line and you'll notice because we're working wet in wet that water that paint will just go where we've dropped the water and I'm also applying it wet on dry right underneath the base of the, of the glass like this and just dropping in a tiny bit more pigment once that is settled down. Now let's talk about the paper because it is important if you want a really strong kind of dark colour with watercolour. I have found throughout my years as an artist that cold pressed paper works better. So the paper that I'm using today is made by Arches and it's actually a rough surface. Now I have in the past used a cold pressed paper or not as it's also known but I accidentally bought the wrong one some time ago and I thought I'd give it a go and I have found the better quality the paper the more likely that it is to get a really strong dark colour. I found that less expensive papers really don't lend to this kind of uh, painting very well and they can go really muddy really really quickly. So I'll talk to you a little bit about that later on in this video, but for now let's get our base washes in place. You'll notice from the photograph that the top of the bottle here has a highlight where the black paint is. So we're just painting in the highlight with a really pale grey colour to begin with once again, working wet on wet, and now I'm working wet on dry, which means I'm applying that paint right up to the pencil line. The brush that I'm using here is a Da Vinci synthetic brush in number five round. You can use any spotter brush or any brush that you like to use, but this little brush was within a kit that I had when I bought a Schmincke set. And like I said, I'll link everything in the description box underneath this video. Once everything's dry, I'm now assessing the colour that I think I'll need for the splash of wine that's coming out of this bottle here. And I felt that the transparent light red was perfect for this. And I'm using the Da Vinci number no. 5 round just to paint this onto the paper wet on dry. This has a really fine point and because it's synthetic I find that synthetic brushes do tend to last a little bit longer and I actually just prefer them. You 
you can see the method of application that I'm using here. I'm applying the paint directly onto the paper and then I'm using the the water within my palette to clean the brush and pat it on the kitchen towel. Now this is really important and I have done a separate video on my application method which you may want to watch and I will link it on the top of your screen for you now if you want to click through after this video and you can see in further detail how I apply my paint but I'm just showing you here we're working around that little lip of the glass as you can see leaving that tiny little gap it's all about observation and creating the illusion of light bouncing off that glass. Watercolour is all about applying layers of paint and making sure that your layers are dry before you apply the next layer. So if you are new to watercolour painting, don't worry, first of all, this is a learn to paint as you paint approach. Also, if you are new, I really recommend that you watch this video all the way through so that you can see that tricky process unfold. I've mixed a tiny bit of neutral tint to that red tone and this gives a kind of muted greyish pinky tone and you can see me adding this to the foam that is formed on the top of the wine. Once again working around that little outside edge there you'll notice from the photo that there is a sort of soft edge on this side and that's why I've done that. Using the little puddle of water on my palette helps me control the paint. So I'm picking up the water from there and just applying it onto the glass like this. Everything's now dry so I've cleaned down my palette and you can see me here mixing neutral tint with my number two size spotter. I'm applying it straight onto that bottle. This time straight up to the pencil line as you can see here, but making sure that I leave that little gap where the highlight is, where the light is hitting it midway or just above midway. So going back to the paper, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about this texture here. The only downside, if there is one, is that because it's watercolour and the way I work, I find that it does take a little bit more manipulating manipulation of the paint to make the paint go exactly where I want it to go. However, the payoff is great because it does mean that we can get those really strong dark colours. The paper is really robust and allows you to create darker layers of paint without the paper or paint going muddy. You can see me here just applying this paint with my number two size spotter brush directly onto the paper like this and then once I've applied the paint where I want it to go I clean my brush using the little puddle of water and just blending it through. Just softening the outside edge like this. So if you are new to watercolour painting, I highly recommend that you watch this video all the way through so that we can push past that tricky phase and you can see how it comes to life at the end. So just working in small layers at a time, no stress, no rush, you can really take your time with, these, with this type of painting. And just gently referencing my reference photograph as I work through. You can see how I'm using the damp brush to pull that paint into the areas where I want it to go, the areas that I want it to be. Just taking my time, but making sure that I leave that central area clear for the time being, because we want, we want it to look as though the light is hitting that element there. You could just as easily use a good quality knot or also known as cold pressed paper for this kind of painting. That would work just as well. As I said, I accidentally bought a rough paper thinking I wouldn't be able to use it, but I actually really like it. So I'm adding a bit of water here to the neutral tint and I'm also adding a tiny bit of perylene violet. Both the neutral tint and the violet colour are from Windsor & Newton. As I said at the beginning, use the colours that you have. So this time I'm working wet and wet again, applying the paint, the water where I want to drop in that paint.
we're given the illusion of the wine being transparent as it pours from the bottle into the glass. By the way, I ought to mention that this mold, this is a mulled wine that I bought um, direct from the bottle. And I know if you're a wine connoisseur, you're probably wincing as I say that. But just tying in nicely with this, we do have a video on how to paint some dried cinnamon and oranges and apples, which may accompany this video. So I'll also link that on the top of your screen if you want to click through to have a look at that one as well. So this is painting wet on wet. There is a little bit of pigment on my um, on my brush there, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to be dropping in the Perilean Violet mix here. This is Perilean Violet with just a tiny bit of neutral tint. The reason that I'm building up the layers like this is because we can put a darker layer on the top and leave out certain elements of the light as we work through. You see already, you can see the illusion of shine on the top of that glass there, and you can see the transparency of the wine as it comes out of the bottle. Once again, once everything's dried, I've cleaned up my palette and this time I'm mixing a petal of a transparent red. It's a really vibrant colour here and again a little bit of perillion. I think I also added a tiny bit of ruby red to this as well. Notice the thickness of the perillion violet at this stage. We don't want it to be so thick that it doesn't move, but we certainly want it to have a little bit more uh, sort of punch to it at this point. We can paint it directly onto the paper, wet on dry, working around the layers that we've already applied. The layers will stick to the paper so you don't have to worry about them moving because we've painted them in really, really fine layers and because of the robustness of this paper. adding a tiny bit more pigment here. I'm just leaving a tiny gap at the underside of the bottle top here because there's a tiny bit of reflecting light and I'm taking that pigment into the dried paint. And as I hit this part here, I'm applying the transparent light red over that pinky wash that we already have. Now this will give the illusion of that burgundy color becoming lighter as the light hits it, but of course they are two separate colors. It's just an illusion. And it really does look as though that burgundy color is becoming that beautiful light red tone, which I really love. Notice how I'm leaving little gaps within this element of the painting, just to give the illusion of that light shining through. So we're not taking this colour everywhere, and this is just the light red. If you don't have this, um, this colour, you could use something like a quinacridone red would work just as well. and I'm just blending out my colors like this using my damp brush. Because the wine is lighter here, just need to apply a tiny bit of pigment. Gone back to my number five Da Vinci brush and I'm just painting over 
the um, element of the wine here now that it's dried just to strengthen it up a little bit. And as I keep saying, use the brushes and the paints that you have. I haven't used this brush before. It was actually um, in a small Schmincke kit that I bought at the beginning of the, or earlier this year and uh, I hadn't used it. And this is the first time I'm using it and I think it's absolutely amazing. I don't think you can buy them on their own, this particular type, but I link, um, I'll put a link in the description box underneath this video. They come in a pack of three, a set of three. And if you want to treat yourself, really beautiful brushes. So now I'm applying the Perillion Violet to the outside just to darken up those outside edges without losing the pink tone and the red tones that I've already painted in. And as usual, just blending it through. I'm just adding a tiny bit more perillion violet to, to the mix and a little bit more of the neutral tint. Cleaning my brush so that I've got a nice clean brush to apply this colour. Now that this is dry, we can get the depth of colour that we are looking for looking for. Notice how I'm leaving a tiny gap at the top. We're going to be blending this in because I did feel there was a tiny bit of reflected light at the top of where the wine is sitting in the bottle. You can get this really dark shade at this point. using the tip of my brush to take it right up to the pencil line, cleaning my brush in the water and just blending it through. As soon as I can feel the paint start to stick, I continuously clean my brush, pat it on that kitchen paper and blend it like this. You can see me here just softening out, just softening out that hard edge at the top. This is just a damp brush. I'm working upside down here. I'm just lifting out a tiny bit of pigment here where I felt there was a tiny bit of reflected light. All I'm doing is using a damp brush and just pressing down on the paper and just lifting off the pigment. So once again, now that everything's dry, we can go over that pigment again using the same mix of the the same mix of neutral tint. This time taking the pigment slightly more into that highlight and blending it through. We want it to look really, really natural. We're going to let this dry and then come back. So once again, I've cleaned down my palette and I'm mixing a puddle of Perillion Violet on its own and a slightly thicker mix of Perillion Violet here with a tiny bit of neutral tint. So they're the same colours as before only this time possibly slightly thicker. I'm using my number zero size brush You can see me here applying this colour where I want the start of the wine to go. When you're looking at the photograph, you'll notice that the outside edge of the glass has that kind of disappearing edge where the light hits it. It's important that we retain that. So I'm starting painting in the colour of the wine just a little bit outside of that mark there, as you can see. 
and I'm just drawing in the line where I want to, where I know I'm safe to go with this particular color once again doing the same on the right hand side just leave, leave in a tiny gap before that wine hits the edge of the bottle and as I hit the middle of it you can see me you can see me adding the perilean violet and neutral tint color in the center there and the perilean violet on the outside Adding a tiny bit of transparent light red. Where that outside edge is, I've just blended it through as before. Just looking at the froth, the bubbles at the top here where I've poured the wine, it's left a sort of natural, sort of bubbly look. And I'm applying water and just dropping in the transparent light red here, working around some of those little bubbles. I'm not going to be painting all of the bubbles, but it's just to give um, the idea that we have some shapes going on here. So I'm dropping in the Perilean Violet mix here, working with the tip of my brush, pushing that pigment where I want it to go, making sure that I leave some of the areas untouched to give that illusion of the shine and the gloss of the wine in the glass. Using the tip of my fine brush, I'm outlining the area where the bubbles hit the surface of the wine. This sharp outside edge gives the illusion of there being a tiny bit of shadow where they meet. Notice how far down I'm blending that wine, <laughs> blending that paint. And using the tiny puddle of water on my palette here just to blend it through again making sure that I stay out of that lighter area as I mentioned earlier on. Just dropping in that perilean violet mix here. You notice it how it blooms, how it pushes itself naturally into that damp pigment. And I'm using my number two size spotter brush to blend them through. Using that darker colour to outline the outside of that edge now that it's dry. If you are finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's a free way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content. And if you are on Instagram, you may want to follow us at The Wonders of Watercolor, where we post daily and also behind the scenes things and upcoming tutorials, that sort of thing. And you may want to consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell notification. If that's not enough, we are on Patreon. You can see we have a number of tiers here. It's a membership program and you can join and we do full length botanical art tutorials as well as we sort of weekly mini vlogs and it's also a way that you can support my channel if you're interested. I will link everything in the description box underneath this video and just so you know everything on Patreon is exclusive to my patrons to give them really good value for money and it's more um, in-depth botanical art paintings if that's your thing. Okay, back to the job in hand. You can see me here just dropping in the paint as before, now that everything's dry and blending it through. Mm -hmm. 
you can see me here just using my very fine brush to begin to put in some of the other bubbles that are on the frothy part of the wine. As I said earlier, I'm not going to paint every single one of them in. We just want to give the illusion of it being like a frothy sort of texture here. So I'm just adding um, a few little bits of paint here and there where I feel I want to give that illusion of those bubbles. Where the more defined bubbles are, I'm going around the outside using my number, uh, this is a number two size brush from Jackson's, but any fine brush will do you well here. Just outlining them with the pigments, as you can see, that I'm picking up from my palette. And once again sharpening up that area where the two meet. This really helps give the illusion of that part sort of sitting away from the wine. I'm using the mix of neutral tint here in a very very fine, a very very watery consistency because once again remember we have the sort of outside edge of this glass on the left hand side here the light is coming in from that direction so you want these to be lighter to give that illusion of the the whole composition being three-dimensional so the style of painting that i use the style of tuition that i use is very much a learn to paint as you paint approach which means that when you join in with my tutorials you'll be learning as you progress through every single one and hopefully you enjoy them as well keep blending in your colors and just keep an eye on your reference photograph remember you can access them from the facebook group So let's go back to that grey colour now that everything's dry again, this time working wet on dry. So I've mixed a watery mix of neutral tint and you can see me applying it here where I want to add some form to the glass. Working around that lip to begin with using my number 5 round. And the same on the other side. We already have our template in place where we want the colours to go, so at this point it's just a case of strengthening up those colours. I'm adding a little bit more neutral tint to my palette here and I can start now to put some shape into the base of the glass like this. Just adding some curves here and there and working around that base. We're negatively painting here which means that we are painting around the white of the paper to create a little shape. Really really simple to do but very effective. So you'll see at this point how easy it is to create the illusion of light reflecting from your subject. It can look really really impressive and it really isn't that difficult. You're just working at smaller elements at a time. Notice how little paint I'm using at this point. Mixing it with a lot of water to make it really, really wet and watery, but really, really subtle so we can apply it where we need to. I'm just working around the outside of the edge, the outside edge of the base of the glass here, just adding some of that darker pigment here and there using the tip of my brush. This is just neutral tint on its own. and I'm applying neutral tint to the lip of the glass like this and making sure that I blend it into the paper and I'll do the same on the other side. With a slightly thicker mix of neutral tint, I'm now enhancing the areas at the top of the bottle. 
We need them to be slightly darker than they are at the moment, so I'm just adding some neutral tint where I feel it is needed to just pull some more shapes into place and then just blend them through. This really gives the illusion of the top part of the bottle being really, really glossy. I'm just drawing in some lines here and there where I feel they're needed and the same on the base. With a thicker mix of Perilee and Violet, I'm now enhancing for the final time the element where the wine is pouring out of the bottle. At this point, you'll notice how dark that paint really is. And going back to the red wine in the bottle, we're just doing the same thing. And as always, blending out that paint. Once you feel your paint sticking, you can just add a tiny bit of water. And now enhancing the little bit of area underneath the base of that glass there. So I'm mixing transparent light red here and just going over some of the areas where that wine is pouring out just to give them a little bit more punch of colour. But making sure that I leave that pink element in the middle. And just adding some more shape to the top of the glass here. There is a label on the on the bottle, but um, I don't. I didn't want to put all of that in, so we're just making up some elements here because I didn't really want to paint the label in. But you can do what you want to. It's your painting. And just enhancing the rim of the glass. going over some of the bubbles to give them some more shape. So at this point in the painting, we've still got about five minutes or so to go, but I'm it's just a, a repeat process now, and you can see how I'm picking up the paint with my brush, going over the elements that I already have in place. Because it's repetitive, I'm going to let you watch me finish this in peace. I'm going to stop talking and let you listen to some nice music. If you are interested in learning how to paint in this way, I'll put a playlist at the end of this video, as well as the little video cards that I put throughout this tutorial. So click through and I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.